Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started again. You want to work your way back here? Yeah, you can bring that one. Um. Can you? It says it's broken. Oh, there we go. Mic check. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, I'm just going to talk about, I could probably do this really quickly, so I'll try to talk somewhat fast since we're kind of crunch for time. We'll see how it goes. So I'm kind of flexible. So I'm going to just talk about how to stop web application version disclosure in .NET on IIS because that's just the environment that I work with, so I'm familiar with that. So when the call went out to get some presentations in, I said I could present this, but here we go. So what I'm talking about, in case people don't know, um, Microsoft, in IIS, if you do .NET development at all, if you just do an out-of-the-box project, this is what Microsoft sets you up for. <laughs> when you actually hit your browser, I'll show you how to actually go to this too. I don't know if anybody else does this. Being a developer, I do this like all day long. But if you hit F12 on your browser, you'll actually go into your little browser tool. Let me bring up this one over here. Doot. And then when you hit your network traffic, you can click on like the top page and you'll get your response header. And so anybody that goes out and hits my site can see that I'm running uh, Microsoft IAS version 10.0. They can see my ASP.NET version. This you have to take a grain of salt with because this is 4.0. I'm actually running 4.6 of the .NET framework, but the way Microsoft does things, this is their build number. And you have to go out and Google what the build number is to actually decipher that to a specific of is it like 4.5, 4.6, 4.7. Um, but it does tell you what major version you're working with for. You can tell I'm running MVC, and you can see what version of MVC I'm running. And you can also tell I'm doing ASP.NET because it just tells you I'm doing ASP.NET. Some people don't think this is too big of a deal. This kind of touches on recon, right? As soon as hackers try to hack into a website, they'll do recon to try to find out like what versions of software that you're running. Then you can go out to like Metasploit or something, Google on Metasploit, that doesn't make sense, but <laughs> go out to Metasploit, do a search on these, and uh, it might tell you, oh, this version is susceptible to this attack. And, this is susceptible to that. So why bother telling attackers what it is you're running, right? You kind of want to try to hide that. And I just, I went to a few websites um, just to show that this is out in the wild and it kind of hurts my head to see it out in the wild. So the first place I tried was DMAC, right? They've got their budding cybersecurity program. Sam's out there somewhere. Um, hopefully he can use these tips to take back to whoever maintains their website because if we go look at their traffic, you can see they are also running Microsoft IIS version 10, and they are also running ASP.NET. So they're actually hiding the version numbers, which is good, but it, they're still releasing information that a potential hacker could use. You know, they could look for specific attacks for ASP.NET vulnerabilities, IIS 10 vulnerabilities. So that was kind of sad. So I figured Iowa State would be better, right? Lots of people have their master's degrees and whatnot from Iowa State and information security. So surely they got their stuff locked down, right? IA State, here we go. And again, they got a lot of traffic. Look at that, just from loading the homepage. Go to the top, bam. <laughs> They're disclosing information. They're apparently not doing IIS, right? They're running apparently an Apache server. You gotta watch out for the server thing. Um, if you've got like a reverse proxy or load balancers, you'll actually see what the like reverse proxy is running on and not necessarily the website. So you do have to take this information with a grain of salt, but it appears they're running on Apache, running PHP, and they'll tell you what version of PHP. So hey. Are there any vulnerabilities in this version? Why Iowa State would do that? Um, I'm not gonna go to it in, for the sake of time, but if you go to uh, University of Iowa's website, they don't disclose any of this. And they're not a tech school, so that was kind of sad and disappointing. Especially since I have a degree from Iowa State. Um, so you figure, okay, universities, they don't have a big tech budget or whatever, right? So uh, I was trying to come up with some companies and I was just randomly picking some stuff. And I picked on American Girl. <sighs> who you'd think they'd have an IT budget and their people would know these sort of things. Um, but nope, if we come up here, take a look at this, we can see if it's the same as what it was I looked at earlier today. Uh, now I'm not seeing it, I'm getting a different, resp oh, I think it was on the, that's nah, just the JavaScript. Well, earlier today when I went here, it was showing information. So I'm not sure what that was all about. So they're good. 
but the biggest offender locally, I was trying to, I went to the big corporations, of course, and most of them have them locked down. Friends and people I know, <laughs> the corporations they work at. I tried theirs, but I don't know if it works at Ruan. If anybody does, please share this presentation with them because uh, they are showing everything out of the box just like my default application does. They're running IS8, so it's a little out of date. It's running on ASP.NET. This is an old version of ASP.NET. This is two point something. That could include ASP.NET uh, version 3.5. Again, you gotta look at your build numbers and stuff. These get weird, but they're not running the latest. <laughs> That's for sure. And they're also running a URL rewriter .NET 2.0. So there might be vulnerabilities on that too. So th this, <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to like fix this stuff in like five minutes. This, this is not rocket science, this is super simple. And why major corporations like this are disclosing all this information is beyond me. And when I show you how simple all this is, you'll probably agree with me. So first thing I'm gonna get rid of, the easiest thing to get rid of is just your X powered by. Now, you can do this at the web server level, and I'm just gonna show you real quick how to change it, all right? I'm not gonna delete it here because then I gotta recreate it and that'll just take time. But if you are on good terms with your web server administrator, <laughs> you could get them to go into your website's HTTP response and you could just highlight X powered by and just remove it. Why Microsoft even has this in here by default in the first place, again, confuses me. Um, you can also change it. Some people like to uh, play with <laughs> hackers and whatnot. And, and so I'm gonna say, well, instead of powered by you know, ASP.NET, I'm gonna power mine by hamsters. <laughs> so then if we come back, refresh my little site, click on this, now I'm powered by hamsters. And I just wanna show you, I do wanna show you one funny thing. Some, some major corporations do have fun with this. And I found that uh, Culver's, they, either their IT department has a sense of humor that CEO or something doesn't know about, or the CEO is kinda cool too. Because uh, if you look at what they are powered by, right here, <sighs> they are powered by custard, butter burgers, and hospitality. <sighs> so you can have some fun if you're CEO or CIO or something, I'll let you get away with that. But um, the hints I'm presenting are from a, like an application developer side, right? If you work in an organization that's heavily siloed, right, you might have like a web server administrator that doesn't want to listen to the developers or for some reason. Um, also, if you're like hosting your website like somewhere else, like an ISP or something, and you don't even have access to the web server, um, the hints that I'm going to show here will hide all this stuff regardless of what the admins are doing on the administrative side. So first one, super easy to get rid of by X powered by. This is my little project. There's two changes to the web config file. One's gonna take care of our X powered by. And I put all these in a Word document to save time <laughs> and to save fat finger errors. We simply put doo -doo 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 -doo, under the custom headers for the system web server, you just tell it to remove it. Remove name X powered by. Now I don't care what my web server admin may or may not be doing. If I refresh my page, come back and check it, bam. It's not saying I'm doing ASP.NET anymore. Of course, these kind of tell you you're still doing ASP.NET. <laughs> so that's insufficient, obviously, unto itself. So we want to get rid of the version number of ASP.NET that we're using. Again, it's a very simple command. It's just this enable version header equals false. Most likely you're gonna have an HTTP runtime already in your web config and it probably has other parameters in it which you obviously don't wanna mess around with. I'll see if mine has a default one. Go back to my editor page. This one of course doesn't go under system web server, this goes under system web. So you gotta know where these things go. That's part of the trick. And here I have an HTTP runtime already. You can see my target framework. 4.6, that's what I'm running, despite it's showing 4.0, because like I said, it wraps all those up in one major version. All we gotta do is append enable version header. That's it. Now it's not gonna stop talking. So right, here it's saying ASP.NET version 4.0, refresh. Go back. Oops. Now my ASP.NET version number's gone. Two simple entries in a web config. Why companies like Ruan and stuff aren't doing this? Makes my head hurt. So those are the changes that we can take care of in the web config. The next two to get rid of our other two entries. 
to get rid of server and ASP.NET, if you're using MVC, right, if you're just doing raw ASP.NET, you'll never see this entry, because this is obviously specific for MVC. Um, for that, we need to go into the global ASAX file, or as I like to call it, the global ASAX. Don't know if anybody calls, else calls it that. So in there, again, this was just my default application that Microsoft built for me. I didn't do anything. So this, the application start was here, and you can see it's just registering a bunch of stuff. Well, we're gonna tell it in there, simply, hey, disable my MVC response header. So I'll just paste that right in my application start. Oh, see, global ASA actually you actually have to stop your service. Then you can make changes. Then you can save, make sure you got your semicolon. Then you fire it up again. This takes a minute to launch which was why for the web config changes, I didn't want to stop it. Can you play Muzak on that thing? We need some doo 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 doo. Oh, still starting. It says I stopped it abruptly, I know. Again, F12, for those who don't know how to use, get to the uh, tools here. Um, the other thing is, right, <laughs> You'll sometimes, you'll gotta make sure that your developer tools are open before your page loads. Um, otherwise, you just gotta hit refresh and load it again. Bam, so now my MVC version's done. So three lines of code, which like hardly requires any effort on anybody's part. All that information's gone, we're down to the server. This one also requires a change to the global ASAX. So I'll stop that. And this one, you actually have to add your own little method. Um, we have to add the application begin request method to this. As you saw, by default, Microsoft does not put this one in here. So for saving time, I'm just gonna copy. Just add it as a new method. It's giving me an error, but it shouldn't be giving me an error. So let's just see if it runs. All this is doing, if we get all this gibberish out of the way. Um, I'm just making sure that we've actually got an HTTP application before I try to set the context, that's it. Um, so if we are running an HTTP application, <laughs> the request is beginning, I simply want to tell in the context of the response, remove the server header. That's it. Mm -hmm. Play our music again, but uh, why are there errors? It doesn't like my application begin request. This is the life of a developer, right? Namespace cannot directly contain members. That's not a namespace. Oh, see what I did? Am I the only developer in here? There are other developers? So <laughs> I pasted it down too low, see? Here's the end of my class declaration right there. So I stuck it outside the class, so that's what the problem is. I just gotta move it inside the class. So if we stick this where it actually belongs, just be glad I'm not typing this all out. Now we launch, it'll launch. Little red squigglies are gone. Now the server will be gone too and we're nice and clean. Once it starts, you can see that. See, now I'll open my dev tools, my site's up. There's no network activity because they're already loaded, right? So again, you just simply reload. Now you get your network. Then you click on your simple page. Then we look at our response headers here and see they're all gone. Done. That's it. So two changes to the web config, two changes to global ASAX. You stop broadcasting to the world what versions you're running. That's it. Questions? No? Does anybody know anybody that works for Ruan? <laughs> if so, please share this with them. Um, I did write a couple summary pages too to try to condense it all that added, you know, this is going to go in the web server, you know, this will go in system web. If you want copies of this, just find me, I sit up front, give me your contact info, I'll send it out to you. Otherwise you could watch it online, right? Freeze, freeze frame and screenshot. So, and that's it, because there's no questions. Thank you.